And we are live on Underground Wicked Radio, interviewing Lambed. Now, if you're not in chat, get in chat, go over to um, JuggaloNews.net, scroll down, click on the Underground Wicked Radio pick, get in the lounge, uh, there's a couple people in there now, um, homie, if you can hear me, click on your name, and... You can choose a different name besides pick. Yeah, Liam Bed's on for an interview, homie. And you, Clement, time. Alright, let's start this. Easy 606, go ahead, homie. Oh, By the way, yes, I'm stuttering a little bit. My fucking blood sugar said, fuck you, and it just like... <laughs> so, I'm down in the sandwich, so... Yeah, I'm gonna be a little... A little, uh... Yeah. Off. Go ahead, homie. <laughs> and we oh, do pick. All know what you pick that name. Are. Pick, pick that name. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, six oh six. All right. We all know that's just your personality, so you ain't got to make excuses, bro. Uh-huh. But, uh huh. <laughs> anyway, so I want to know what you guys are all about. Where would you, where'd your name come from? Give me a little bit of background about you guys. Cool. Well, the main thing is that me, me and my brothers are twin brothers. We grew up in a, a family that wasn't really musical too much. We had an uncle that played music and stuff like that. But we uh, basically came from a broken home. Parents divorced at seven, and music was just uh, a lifeline. Kept us going, being inspired by by rap groups, to metal groups, to everything, and uh, oh, no. and. And we uh, we basically uh, music has been our, our saving grace, and we actually were self-taught musicians. Where when we were about 12, 13 years old, we started teaching ourselves guitar, and bass, drums, started singing, doing all that. And before we, we even knew we had voices or anything like that, we knew that it's something that we wanted to do. Yeah, we we're pretty much uh, we we're pretty much conceived in California, born in Chicago, and then grew up kind of California, Iowa, ho- hopping from. Mom to dad, divorce, whatever, that whole dumb shit. Uh, but, yeah, we've pretty much uh, uh, been around, and uh, we just you know, we love all types of music. But uh, we just, uh, our heart's pretty much in California. We're trying to get back to the summer. Um, and uh, But we pretty much want to see the world, though, probably. Uh, get things going like that. But uh, pretty much me and him just write all the songs, play all the instruments on most of our albums, and... Uh, about it. Um, we've had band, we've had uh, rhythm sections, bass and drums, and played a lot of shows. Been able to open up for national acts and stuff, and, and really just been a, uh, it's really just been something, you know, that we're passionate about, and really it kind of picked us. We really didn't pick it, and uh, so yeah. Okay, so Clementine yeah. awesome. in chat Perfect. says that. These dudes plays plays good. Wow, see that man? I feel like I'm fucking drunk. But these dudes play guitars and shit like me. I can dig that. So let's right. cut right over to a song. Let's give these guys a taste of Lambed. I'm telling you, right. man. When I hear these guys, automatically think Nickelback. Clementine, tell me if I'm wrong. Nickelback. Think about that. <laughs> We're going to cut over to Bad Valentine. Valentino. Go ahead and tell us about this song right. before we cut over to it. Um, and that song's so raw. It's from one of our first CDs we made uh, in Long Beach, and it's really self recorded, really raw. And, uh, you know, in the last couple of years, we've done real studio albums where we've gone to real studios, but it's really a raw song, and uh, a lot of it's freestyle. I mean, him. One of us getting on drums, one of us getting on guitar, and really just uh, pushing pushing a tape recorder and just coming up with coming up with with uh, lyrics over the music and and doing that. But that that song has a lot of uh, a lot of lyrics in it about just all kinds of life situations. Well, yeah, we 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 prefer uh, Faith No More Nirvana over Nickelback, but that's cool though, because Nickelback was influenced by Nirvana and all that stuff. But uh, we we pretty much. Uh, just raw rock and roll and just kind of freestyle hit and record and whatever you come over you come over we'll be back after this time you guys whoop whoop cool
or my 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 partner got locked up. <laughs> we are back on Underground yeah, Wicked Radio, starting out with six oh six partner getting locked up, but yeah, that's he, off the. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about Brother Lynch when me and Wicked Ways was, was getting ready to go on tour with Lynch and Devil Boy got locked up. Damn. Brother Lynch like will be getting on for an interview this month. This month, yeah, wow. Sometime this month, um, his manager is going to get me with me here for a date. Easy, right. go ahead, homie. All right. Um, well, I was going to leave off where we left off, man, and uh, I was going to say earlier that like one of the things I always regretted about early on in life was not being able to learn an instrument, man, because I just can sit there and like I was, I can feel these guitars, man. I can just feel like I want to pick one up and just uh, just go at it, you know. Yeah. And I always I always regret that. Like I still feel maybe one day I might I might just pick up yeah. and try to learn. I don't know. Never too late. Never too late. Well, yeah, luckily we were young when we started, so we, we we had a lot of time on our hands, and uh, so we ended up being able to learn stuff and and kind of come up with our own kind of style and no rules kind of attitude. But she. Yeah, Season of the Sickness was definitely one of my top favorite albums of all time. Season of the Sickness, oh, Rolling Stone. Dude, you said that. It's crazy you said that because once I give you my link, go check out my song called Season of the Sickness. Because actually, like we were talking about, I was about a week or so from doing a collab with this dude. And I did that song for him. Like I wrote the hooks, I wrote, I wrote everything out. And we was going to do that song with him, me and my partner, and he got locked up. So I lost all my connection with Lynch. So I just added another one of my homies on there. So, but it's and done. Cool. But that that song was supposed to have Lynch on it. <laughs> wow, that's pretty you amazing. You may huh? see that in the future. A different song with yeah, Lynch. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. man. I'm going to ground it to it does. It'll happen. <laughs> all about. It's all about persistence and yeah, never giving up and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's my that's my attitude, man. I, mean, I have that never give up attitude. But uh, I like how you said that you put a lot of that you had a lot of background in your music because, like we talked about earlier, man, that pain really gives a good story. Like it makes people really feel what you're saying because they can relate yeah. to what you're saying. Oh yeah. So. That's yeah. the best music, I think, when people put that raw emotion in there. Oh, yeah, when, when people, yeah, that's what people can relate to, stuff like that, because, you know, life ain't always peachy. A lot of times it's a lot of downs, but uh, there is joy, though, which is cool, but it's a lot of downs, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the magic of music right there. So you guys have any new projects that you're working on right now? Yeah, yeah we're actually getting ready to go in to record our sixth CD, which uh, is going to be awesome, and uh, we're going to go in there, and we have a bunch of you know. Every time we write a bunch of new new batch of songs, we always think uh, you know these are these are our best songs, and and it's what we're feeling right now at this time period, and a lot of it's you know the same same uh, style that we have, uh, just kind of our own with the land bed, you know, no rules, and uh, so we have songs that are heavy, some that are mellow everything in between some that flow some that are a lot of singing some that are a lot of aggressiveness and so it's just really just a bunch of everything no rules you know that's what's up so uh Snicker are you still there? Yep, I'm ready to go homie I'm uh hey, I think I'm okay now I think it's, I think it's what, where we go, when am I going to hit it with the hot seat? we have got eight minutes homie I'm going to ask a question. I've got a song request from one of their fans in chat. They want to hear, is it, how do you pronounce this song? Eth Real? At the Real. At the Real. At the Real. Don't mind me, I can't fucking read some lines. Her name is Ethereal, but we call it Ethereal, but it's Ethereal, yeah. Ethereal. <laughs> and yeah, we we, we, we got to give love to the, 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 the rock station out here, Kilo, that, that plays all these national acts. They just played that song a couple of days ago, and it was pretty much uh, just an awesome kind of boost for us to hear that on the radio. I saw that post. Congrats. Yeah, I appreciate it. And the cool thing is this station out here, they'll give local bands a lot of... Uh, 
a lot of time on mainly on Monday nights, and they, they've given us a lot of love. We, we've been probably played about ten times, and uh, we thank you know Sid for playing us with Kilo, and uh, we, we also appreciate you guys, man, giving us love and yeah. and we we definitely your songs uh, will stay in like rotation, homie. I run twenty four seven, so definitely. Awesome. People are definitely going to know who you are. Um. So, what are some highlights or accomplishments of your guys' career so far? Yeah, I would say it's. I would say it's still, still. You know, cause there's been plenty of times we could have been married and had kids and all that. Like a lot of our friends, a lot of ex band members. But a lot of times we've. Uh, Stuck to our guns and and really just uh, been about music still keeping that dream alive. A lot of people give up their dreams, and but the, the highlight mainly is uh, opening up for Wasp, Head PE, Fast and Pussycat, uh, a big band from Japan, Man with a Mission, and really really having CDs that we've recorded that people have uh, written us that it's helped them get through certain situations and and, and that's really uh, that's really the highlight is uh, the feedback from people saying you know. You, it helped me this music's helped me get through a lot of different bad times and good times and this and that so that's pretty much it so go ahead and tell us about your like song uh, which one? Oh, Ethereal? yep yeah the uh, song pretty much says it all but it's funny that uh, we grew up with our uncle that used to play this a 60's group uh, Kingston Trio that were folk but uh, if you listen to the beginning and end of it, we, we took a sample from that folk artist, Kingston Trio, uh, where they're talking about uh, when I was a little baby, when I was a day, son. Listen to that. That pretty much says it all uh, about music, and uh, no one gives a shit about a good, you know. The only, the only people that ever care about us is a guitar and fucking some brandy or something. Whiskey. And, and the main point of that song is that uh, that uh, no, even if you don't make it, ever make it, at least you try and you don't have regrets saying, oh man, I should have done this, I should have done that. We'll be back after this. You heard it from Lambed. Whoop, whoop. We are back on Underground Wicked Radio. So, yeah. you guys know what? Take a listen we to can't. this. Hold up, it's 606. I gotta do something. So we got the siren going. I don't know if you can hear me with the siren going. But that siren means it's time for 606 Peanut Butter Jiff Hot Seat. I mean, we now have we now have Dingleberry Jam to go with that 606 <laughs> Peanut Butter. Oh, we got a whole minute thing coming. Wait till you hear the cookie commercial. <laughs> um, <laughs> for uh, Mama's Boy's cookies over there. We got, we got things that, oh man, it's, it's, it's on. But, uh, we're back to the hot seat here. Everybody knows about the hot seat. I asked some questions, some random ass questions to get your all personal opinions and let the people know about you. So, uh, let's cut into it here. Um, See, I've already actually kind of touched this a little bit, but your question might uh, vary a little bit. Um, if you could cross genre collab with any one artist, dead or alive, who would it be? Tupac Shakur. I knew it. Doubt. <laughs> I knew it's what you were going to say. I was like, oh, we already kind of touched that, but I just wanted to see what really. you yeah. Oh, yeah, Tupac, definitely, for sure, yeah. Okay, so you guys are gonna, you guys are accidentally shipwrecked. Let's just say we're gonna do some Gilligan's Island shit. You're shipwrecked for five years, and you can only have two albums to listen to for five years. I wanna know what those two albums are. I would say uh, Korn's, Korn's self-titled album that came out in 95. Uh, or 94 Corn self-titled album and uh, either, either Wasp or Twisted Sister so Stay Hungry no yeah, see, uh, see, 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 see <laughs> we're debating he, he said that I, I would say Tupac All Eyes On Me and Corn first album now Kevin your turn yeah I, I would say Stay Hungry by Twisted Sister and Wasp Wasp their first debut album wow and whoever said okay you know what my two answers were yeah, it's crazy. 
Corn followed the leader and Tupac all eyes on me. Oh, man. <laughs> that was crazy. Awesome. Was like, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> nice. Okay. okay, so let's see. Let's jump into one of the one of the recent topics here. Bill Cosby, America's mm-hmm. favorite dad or a serial drug rapist. What you what, what do you both. think? You think Bill's innocent? Uh, I'd, I'd say both, but unfortunately, there, there's some too too many women that have come out and talking about that. But yeah. to me, though, he, he he's left his mark with positivity and negativity now, so it's kind of yin and yang. Right, which which is human nature. So yeah, he's just like all of us, good and bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's I don't understand. I don't understand why it took these women all these years to all come out at once like a parade. But then yeah. again, I can see Bill does kind of have that little that has he has that look like, hey, I put some in the drink, bitch. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy that someone with that much success would even ever have to even attempt to do that and wouldn't just have women following him around all the time. I mean. Yeah, you, you get free pussy. Why are you doing that? Like, come on. <laughs> that's what I try to yeah. tell people. Because I used to always get in fights with people over Michael Jackson. Because I'm a huge yeah. Michael Jackson person. And oh, yeah. like, oh, well, if he did that shit with little boys, whatever. I'm like, man, he didn't have to. That dude had women that would pass out over him. He could yeah, have man. any woman in the world that he wanted. Yeah, uh, but but then but then the the other side of it to me is like if there is victims from someone, then then unless we're in their shoes, you know, we, we really really don't know, you know, the pain they go through. Well, yeah, hey, 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 one one thing one thing I always question is how come there wasn't any girls that came out. That's what uh, got me. So I was a huge Michael Jackson fan. Thriller was my first album. I wanted to be Michael Jackson, but there's no girls that came out. So I was like, oh shit, okay. Uh, so, See, yeah, I just think it. Basically, what I thought it was is, you know, he always talked about how he didn't have a childhood. He was he he was yeah. basically ripped out of his whole childhood. So yeah. was he weird yeah. in the head? Absolutely, he wanted to be a kid. Uh, yeah, that's why he always weird. had. That's why he built a damn amusement park at his house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I understand that shit. Did other people understand it? Hell no. Yeah. And all, all, the people that 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 ever, yeah. all the people that ever accused him of shit were all kids that were dying of diseases and needed money. Yeah. yeah. That's, why we, that's why we'll never know, but I think if, you know, if, whether people believe there's a maker or not, that, that's, that's when the truth will really come out. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, let's see. One more question here. Um... Let's see. Trying to think of how I want to put that one. Okay. So how do you think social media has has affected the industry? Like is it a good has it affected it on a good platform or on a bad one? Or both? I say good and bad because uh Back then, you could get a, a record deal, and people will support you, and they'll, they'll give you a loan. You go out tour, have a couple albums, they won't drop you out the one album. Nowadays, it's like real quick. Everything's quick. It's like fast food. It's uh, good and bad. And the only time anyone in, back in the day could come see you play live is if they can't, came and bought a ticket and seen you live. They bought an album. They wanted to hear the whole album. They'd have to go buy it. Nowadays, everything's pretty much out there where you can watch any, any show you miss live. You can see it on YouTube. You can download any song, this and that. So yeah, I think it is good and bad because you can get, you know, there's people like even yeah. us. You guys probably wouldn't even have heard of us if it wasn't for the internet. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a good thing. Yeah. Uh, one song that country artist came out with, she had a song called uh, Automatic, which is, I don't know who the fuck that was, but from country artist, where everything's automatic nowadays. So it's good and, good and bad. So. That's absolutely true. It gives everybody... It gives everybody access to anything they want quick. Like you said, yeah, it's good it's because, good. yes, it does yeah. give us that exposure. Yeah. But it's also no bad because... Yeah. yeah. There's no mystery It's also anymore. bad because it stops a lot of the... It does cut into the money side of being a artist because, you know, like you said, a lot of people, they don't worry about missing shows because they can see it. They can download whatever songs they want off the internet. Pirating, yeah. of course, is a huge thing. 
Oh, yeah. But I never do that. <laughs> you believe yeah, that one is 606? I never pirate. Don't believe in it. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Snickers, you there? <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, uh, DJ Snickers and Easy uh, 606, we, we were definitely, man, we wanted to thank you guys for, for the exposure and putting us on, man. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. No problem, man. Whole, we're looking forward to having you back on again in the future, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah thanks, man. So 606, y'all done with the hot seat? No, 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 no hold on. Let's, hold do, on, let's hold do, on. do one more. Let's do one more just here. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> let's see. What are you looking at? That's what I got. Mm. Do, 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 do. Okay, here's one. Here's one. I like this one. So you got three words that you can describe your band. Three words that describe your band. Pick the three words that you could think of right off the top of your head. I'd say, uh, I'd oh, yeah. say passion, heart, and strength. Okay, so that was him saying that, but I'm, I'm going to say the name of our next CD, which is uh, uh, Verses, Curses, and Blessings. That says it all. Verses, Curses, and Blessings. We, we write about our, our curses and blessings. Hey. Hey, I like that. that. That's deep. I like that. <laughs> yeah. That tells you. That tells you the whole story right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> what, what about you? Hey, we ask you the same thing. Easy six or six. We ask you the same thing. What would you describe? Three words. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say hunger, originality, and mm, a hunger, originality, and different. There we go. There it is. Yep. That's what it's all about, man. No, no cookie cutter. Shit. I could be us too, right there, man. Fuck yeah. Yep. But, uh, let's see. Snickers, what all? You got anything to ask him, or you want to cut it to another song, or what? Nope. We need to cut over to another song. I want to go to Shock of Pain. Oh, yeah. Shock of the Pain. LA and Denver. Go ahead and tell us about this song. Uh, this song is actually uh, just about growing up and about uh, talks about uh, the Colorado from the Colorado Rockies, these California dreams, basically from going back and forth to Colorado to California, growing up, and uh, and it's really and it talks about heavy metal back in the day when the PMRC thought it was all devil worshiping stuff, and here it was like uh, our religion, like, like something that. Give us hope, and so that song basically came from that. And it's also about uh, all the evil in the world, all that stuff, kind of uh, tooth, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth type uh, mentality. We'll be back after this. this Whoop! Go for it. Oh, no, I just wanted to note that uh, a couple times in our lifetime, we had our parents throw away all of our posters and tapes and albums on it. They ripped them off the walls. And said, oh, the satanic is fucking you guys up. But here it was saving us. It was like uh, saving grace. And here they're throwing that shit away. And we go in the dumpster and retrieve it. And uh, so it was kind of funny. They, they, they thought it was negative and in actuality or something positive. Well, there's one of our questions. Does your parents uh, support your music? So I guess not. Oh, no, not nowadays, of course. Yeah, now, yeah. Now, nowadays, nowadays they feel dumb for doing that because they're like, oh, that was your guys' outlet and that was your positivity and it got you playing instruments and all that shit and away from drugs and gangs and all that shit, which we were around. And uh, so now, yeah, now it's funny that they kind of support, but they kind of don't in a way, too, because uh, they uh, want us to have retirement plans and all that shit, which uh, we might not live to be that long, so who gives a fuck about When that. you guys are buying <laughs> them... A brand new jacuzzi and car. Oh yeah. Re- remind yeah. them yeah. of that. That's when. Yeah. yeah that, that's when we'll. The, that's when we'll pr- finally hear. I'm proud of you, son. This and that. But if if mm-hmm. not, you know, I mean, it's. I wouldn't want their lives, you know. Yeah, I I'd be like, uh, remember when you tore my posters off the wall? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Molly Krug getting ripped off the fucking wall. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be back after the song. Woo woo. You know. And we are back on Underground Wicked Radio. 
Yeah. 606 just did the hot yeah. seat. If you missed it, oh, he's over there. What? He, he probably thinks I'm going to throw him under the bus. Just for that, 606, <laughs> go for it. Okay, well, you try, are you trying to give me a hint or you want me to ask some more questions, fool? Maybe, Mr. <laughs> T, fool. I pity a fool. Hey, we, we appreciate the time you guys have given us, man. It's, it's awesome. You're welcome. Playing those songs. I know what he's trying to get me to do, but uh, I'm gonna ask you another. I'm gonna ask you a normal question, and then we'll go into what he's wanting. <laughs> so uh, let's see. We talked about Tupac a lot. So what do y'all think about the whole Tupac uh, Biggie Smalls beef? I know personally, those were two of my favorite artists. Oh yeah, to me, to me, there's a total, I think, misunderstanding where. But of course, I could see Tupac's side where he would think, "Okay, I'm at these guys' studios. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm on their home turf. Something happened to me. They gotta know who did it and why it happened." And then when it comes to Biggie's side, I could see them being like, "You know, we had nothing to fucking do with it." And uh, you know, we we love Tupac. We have love for Tupac. We would never have something like that intentionally happen. And so I see both sides. And so I, I think it was just one of those misunderstandings between friends where it's like you know you guys had to know this happened they're like hell no we didn't even fucking ever think this would happen you know in our, on our you know, own especially going back yeah you know what happened basically there was one thing there was one word you can say that would sum up that whole beef and it was sure yeah. it should not yeah. it should like that. that he wanted to make ratings he wanted record. to make money yeah yeah okay. So I but that's why you look at where, where he's at and what, what's happened with his life, and it's like, man, it's just uh, all the way around. Yeah. Seems like the guy that profited off of everything was Puffy, because now I look at him, he's sitting on top of the world. That guy owns everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. But to me, Tupac, out of all them, it's like no, no one could write like him, no one had that drive like him. And that much impact that he had, you know, dying at such a yeah. young age and recording so many albums and so many songs. Yeah, yeah, Puffy don't have that uh, street cred or fucking life cred or any 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 cred that'll last like that. He, he don't have what Tupac had. You know, I'm the no. legacy. For, for no. So you can have all the money and all the companies. Yeah, he's just a businessman, that's all it is. Yeah, he, and he, have, he said yeah. that a long time ago that he has nothing to do with the street. Yeah, but to me, uh, Brother Chong to me though is way underrated fucking rapper of all time. Way underrated because that dude has some lyrics on it. So. I will be seeing him on my radio soon for an interview. Hey, 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 I'm good friends with his manager. World, if you're listening, right. homie, I can't wait. Oh, yeah. But the main thing out of, out of any any rapper, Tupac, most people say he's left the most impact. You know, people say Biggie and all that, but I think Tupac he recorded more songs, more more albums, did all that. More of a workaholic, hungry, still. Yeah, they were two different worlds, though. I mean, yeah. Tupac was a military. He was a poet. He was very military minded. You know, yeah. he, he grew up in that whole Black Panther movement with his mom. Yeah, and poor. He's poor yeah. too. Biggie, yeah, Biggie. His mom said that she, he had anything he ever wanted. Uh, she contradicted them and said, "Yeah, he had a PlayStation, he had or Nintendo, all that shit." But Tupac didn't have none of that. She said she provided him with everything yeah. he ever wanted. Yeah. Except, except he was just big. The type of cat he wanted more. He wanted okay. to be like cool kids, you know. He wanted the the flyest clothes and the jewelry. He wanted that dope boy lifestyle, so he went out and got it. Yeah, but the good thing about music yeah. is that people can relate to Tupac, they can relate to Biggie, they can relate to being poor. Some people can only relate to kind of growing up wealthy, and so that's the power of music. People, everyone can relate to different people, all that stuff. There's music for everyone, songs for everyone. But... Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Johnny Cash, yeah, Johnny Cash, too. Hey, can't forget the man in black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, here's another thing that I, I thought was kind of cool. I think y'all might enjoy this. One of my real good friends, man, he's like one of my brothers. He's in uh, the penitentiary right now. He should be out 
hopefully this year. And he is the godson, oh, not the godson, uh, he's the, uh, his papa, he is the, the grandson <laughs> of Waylon Jennings. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's Waylon Jennings. His name's Strong. Dang, that's like Scooter Jennings, uh, is Waylon Jennings' family, where he's, uh, I'm not sure how far down the line he is, but. He makes Scooby is Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Waylon, Waylon played, I think, bass and Buddy Holly out of Lubbock, Texas. Uh, he played bass, and then he became his own. But yeah, we, we grew up with uh, Waylon Jennings Records, our household. Yeah, Waylon, he uh, struggled with his, like I said, his grandson. He struggles mom. Like toured with Waylon, did a lot of backup vocals and stuff like that when he was younger. But then Stretch right. grew up in the bad side. He grew up in the hood and te- and uh, not Texas, but Tennessee. So he grew up with that with a whole different culture. So he started he did he did the whole rap thing. But right, be- right before he went into to prison or whatever, they, he started doing the whole. He and the fluence, he did a lot of Waylon influences in his music. And that's when he, he got all the Yellow Wolf. Like him and Yellow Wolf are extremely close. Yellow Wolf, yeah, he's been in the Black Sheep here in Colorado Springs a lot. Yeah, yeah we, we normally uh, kind of generate towards the, the darker side of music, which I like a lot of the darker type stuff. Waylon is kind of dark and all that kind of stuff. Even uh, Hank 3, Hank Williams uh, 3, you know, he, so we, we kind of kind of uh, gravitate towards the darker type of music. Yeah. Cool. And that's exactly what I mean. I, 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 I couldn't wait to hear some of your feedback, man, because this is what I, I, I am the darkness, man. Like, you know, with with Lynch being influence and Tech Nine and, you know, like, I, I definitely go to that dark side. Yeah. That's but, a lot uh, of people kind of like to we're going to go to the infamous question that Snickers is going to have to ask. <laughs> this is a question that we ask every single artist. It started off as a joke, but then the reactions that people have to it are priceless. So we made it a uh, household thing. It's called the red question. Are you guys ready for this? Yep. So both of y'all have to add, so you can take it. Take turns. Right, Who's there in here if you guys have earned your red wings? <laughs> <laughs> um, by accident, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so have you earned your red wings? Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, by, by accident, and I kind of wanted to uh, lynch the chick, but uh, yeah, by accident. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would just dive right in. It's just, you know, doesn't oh, taste any different. <laughs> pretty, 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 pretty rusty. And then, uh, I mean, you, you, you go to the bathroom to piss, and you look in the mirror, you're like, "What the fuck?" And then, yeah. Oh no, oh no, that's not your true Red Wings. Your true oh, okay. Red Wings, man. You got to get right down in there with the tongue. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah. I mean, to me, to me, to me most, most women aren't worth, or most girls aren't worthy of that, that that I've dated. But some some are. So it kind of depends on the situation. Right. I mean, I do it just to do it, just to say, hey, I've done it. I think alcohol usually is involved when it comes to oh, kinky yeah. stuff uh, like that. Yeah, it sure is. Yep. Yeah, because I, I remember thinking one time, like, damn, she's really getting off. And then I go, it's and look in the mirror, I'm like, okay, uh, that wasn't what I thought it was. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the liquid I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It looks like a horror film. I gotta I'm start a clip it. It looks like, I'm gonna start making clips of the red question and put it up on the radio as just like random spots where it comes on. Man, that's hilarious. We gotta tell you, we gotta tell you the numbers though for real. <laughs> Go for well, it. Yeah, I've, so I've had it where 
I've had it to where it looks like I've gotten shot with a shotgun down below and the top. Where it's like, holy shit, what the fuck didn't you tell me? That's alcohol for you, demon alcohol. That's all I gotta say. Demon <laughs> yeah, alcohol for everything from hand in hand. So, have you ever heard of the dilemma he writes for like Tech Nine and Brother Lynch? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember uh, Six of the Song. Yeah. yeah. So, we had him on. That's one of my homies from the back in the, the Brother Lynch days. And <laughs> we asked him the question. He said, didn't say shit. So, yeah. yeah. His manager, World, hits Snickers up like, dude. You gotta cut that out the interview. You can't talk about gangs <laughs> because he's a cool and he don't. He don't. He thought we, we were talking some blood terminology. That's funny. He said, "You gotta cut that, that out the interview." <laughs> so Snickers yeah, said, yeah. Like, "He said, go ask the old lady what that means and come back." Yeah, that's funny. That's the thing with us, yeah, you, like, like in our music, we're not, there's really no kind of like sexuality type stuff and all that stuff, but uh, it's more, but that's funny though, uh, you know, kind of a comedy question. Well, well, we could write a whole album off of that shit though, but yeah, we don't, but yeah. I call him, uh, Red Wings going hand in hand. Then we had another dude that was like, man, I don't even like hockey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was funny. a good one. It's like, it's like Brother Lynch hung stuff off season of six. Guess what daddy's bringing home for supper? Yeah, or you better pray when you see me little bit nine up in the yeah, whole song. Yeah. You guys got to call in when I get Brother Lynch on for an interview. Ask him oh, yeah, some questions. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Yeah, we, we graduated high school right by uh, Sacramento, a little, little 120 mile north to Sacramento. But yeah, we knew Brother Lynch hung graduated high school. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's that town, man, that's where he, see, that, that's his territory. Yeah. Sacramento, yeah. I was telling them, uh, we know Brother Lynch Hung's manager pretty well. That's awesome. Yeah, he, he comes through the black sheet every now and then, him and Tech 9. I remember first time I, I seen Tech 9 at the black sheet here in Colorado Springs, there was cops across the street on the fucking motel roof. There was a shooting the year before. So there was, like, there was cops on the ho- motel roof, like, taking pictures of everyone, binoculars, all that shit. It was crazy. I was like, what? That's awesome. Well, wow. wow. yeah, that's the beauty about music. It's like him, to me, it was kind of like when I heard season of six. It's kind of like a, like I kind of like listened to, like, a horror film. But then, but then to me, when I listen to, like, Tupac and all that, it's kind of more... Uh, we're just more real, like, that's where I'm really like a joke band where we have like songs that are, you know, really jokes, kind of more like serious type stuff, but to me I enjoy all types of stuff, you know, from lighter side of life to the darker to everything. Uh, yeah. Snickers, wait, what's going on, man? I don't know, I'm just chilling, you know, you know hey, how it is. You, so you, know, you know how we do this. Okay. Let's go ahead and you we'll go ahead and do the shout out, sir. Hey, hey, sorry, it was muffled. What did you say? Yeah, he's talking to me. Um, you guys, it's okay. your time. Go ahead and do some shout outs. Another radio cool. drop if you want. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to thank uh, DJ Snickers, Easy Six Hundred Six, Underground Wicked Radio for having us on we really appreciate it spreading the word of music and not just rap not not just metal but rock and everything else in between we just really appreciate it we want to thank everyone that's ever been in our band and has helped us along the way and uh, I'd like to thank my brother Patrick here for uh, us sticking to our guns and keeping this dream alive uh, and here, here's a good one too uh, it's the L-N-B-B-D you can't fuck with me take a step back look around and say reality yeah uh, yeah. Thanks, Wicked Underground Radio, man. Underground Wicked Radio. You guys all set? We're definitely going to check you guys out. Definitely. Your music will be in rotation. Cool, yeah, we appreciate it, man. We'll, we'll be in touch for sure. Um, you we have the uh, Facebook account? Yes, I do. I want to go... Tell them about one of my big interviews that I had. With them being a rock band, I'm sure they can appreciate this. 
Do you guys know who Andy Gerald is? Andy Gerald. Oh, Gerald. Shit. Gerald. Who is that? Marilyn Manson's bass player. Oh, okay. Not Twiggy, but... Yeah. Twiggy is the original. I've seen that off the... Yep. Gerald is the new one. Oh. He's been... Oh, years awesome. now. I've interviewed him three times. Damn. I've got a radio drop from yeah. him, and his new CD... He's now singing in a band, There Is No Loss. Oh, hell yeah, that's cool. Dang, I didn't know that. Yep, yeah, check that out, man. We, yeah, we need to check out all your guys' stuff, man. We appreciate that. You're welcome. So, two more questions. Did you guys enjoy your interview, and would you come back? Oh, yeah, definitely, yep. Definitely, we, we, yeah, man. You, you guys, you guys are awesome, and uh, I like that. Uh, you know, it's not just uh, cause we've been interviewed before, and I like that it's uh, just pretty much kind of freestyle interview where uh, talk, we can talk about anything. We can all relate to each other, from rap to metal to life to everything. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Talk. <laughs> I, mean, so, uh, I don't like grilling people, man. Like I've, I've been on many interviews. This is like. They drill you with the same five questions over and over and over, yeah. you know? Yeah, but yeah, this yeah is, I like yeah, to be so uh, different. It's been refreshing. Yeah. One more yeah, question. Yeah, definitely been refreshing. Let's see if you guys know who this is. This is going to be 606's favorite topic. Oh, you God. guys like Slim Jesus. I've heard of Slim Jesus. I've, ne I've never heard of him. I read about him, but I haven't. I haven't heard his stuff. But I, I've seen him in like Spin. Huh. He's a little. He's this kid that lives up here about 15 minutes from me in Ohio, and he made he made a song. Uh, this is his very first video of one of his very first songs he ever recorded, and he made a shitty video with him waving around pistols at the beginning of it. So. This big blog group picked it up as a joke and like, look at this white kid, ha ha ha. Uh, he went viral. He got 12 million views in a week. Damn, that's the internet so for you. He's the biggest new joke slash white boy rapper out there right now, making all of us other ones look bad. So I hate <laughs> this kid. Yeah. I go up and down this kid. Yeah, I drive up and down this kid hoping to see this kid one day. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard him yet, but I read about him. I think I've seen him in Spin or some shit or the internet, but I haven't heard him yet. What really made him blow up, though, amongst the other rappers, is his very first interview was with DJ Vlad. And he, DJ Vlad asked him straight out. He's like, so in the video, you were waving around a pistol talking about Anybody who messes with you can come get it. You're just gonna shoot this person. Da 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 da. da. He's like, so, you know, are you about are you about that life? And he said, no. He said, I just rap about it because it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fake. Fake ass, yeah. Oh yeah. So that yeah. made everybody. That made him blow up even more. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's that's pop culture for you. Yep, I completely yeah. agree. All right, we're going to hop off. It's 11.03. Anyone tuning in, we will be back tomorrow. Oh, shit, we get two interviews tomorrow. Freak Boys and who is calling me during an interview? Cyrus. DJ Mama's Boy, you dumb fucker. Just for that, you get a new commercial. DJ Mama's Boy, your commercial will be done tomorrow. You're fired. No more. No more DJing. Calling me like that in the middle of an interview. <laughs> but we are interviewing Freak Misfits. Freak Misfit. He does slash rock rap. And then Unknown Factor is going to be at 8 o'clock. He's a new artist I just picked up. So we got... Freak Misfits interviewed by Voice of the Misfits. Okay, I like that. Who we got on the uh, phone? Go ahead, caller. Mama Boy. <laughs> That's where you answer. Aha, uh -huh, motherfucker. 
<laughs> fired, fired, <laughs> fired, fired, fired. <laughs> this is DJ Mama's boy we were just telling you about. Oh, cool. oh shut up. <laughs> why don't you tell me uh, why, go. why you're DJ Mama's boy? Because I'm good looking. <laughs> His <laughs> mother, I have him hey, come on to help me with an interview. His mother is in the background yelling at him because he didn't do the <laughs> dishes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and <laughs> hey, 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 I'm heading to the bar. Man. Thank you guys. Hey, hey, you guys thanks, you thanks so much. Thanks so much for the interview, man. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You guys have a good night. Thank you. All right. You, all right. You too. Thanks. Good night. And we're getting off. Hey, and we'll have a good night. night. Tune in tomorrow, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern, for the first interview. Then again at 10, Freak Misfits. Have a good night. Woo woo. Oh, wait, hey, don't forget to check, woo, woo. check out JuggaloNews.net. And again, you can find us on there. Click on the pick. Go we'll check out our lounge. JuggaloNews.net. And my Yes. And my Yeah. God damn it, Mama's boy. I'm trying to do a promo. <laughs> Finish it easy. Juggalo News out there. Number one source of the wicked shit. Whoop whoop. <laughs>